During this presentation, I'm going to talk to you about humeral condylar fractures in the dog. Let's go over some anatomy of the dog's elbow. And we start off with a side view. This bone here is called the humerus bone. This is called the ulna bone. And this is the radius bone. These three bones come together to form the elbow joint. From a front view, you can see the humerus bone, the radius bone, and the ulna bone is sort of hiding behind the radius bone. And again, these form the elbow joint. One of the conditions that we see in dogs is called incomplete ossification of the humeral condyles. When a puppy is very young, that is when it is a fetus in its mom's belly, the bones are going to be cartilage. They're not going to be mineralized as they are in the adult state. As a result, the cartilage will eventually get calcium deposition in it and it becomes ossified. It changes basically into bone. The bottom of the humerus has two ossification centers. One here called the ossification center of the medial epicondyle. And then we have this area here, the ossification of the lateral epicondyle. These ossification centers gradually progress towards the midline and eventually fuse completely. In some dogs, however, due to a genetic defect, we find that there's a thin line of, of tissue, of cartilage, that has not changed completely into bone. As a result, we end up with a fine crack in the bone. This is a problem because it is a weak link between the medial and the lateral condyles. This is a CT scan showing a dog that has this condition called incomplete ossification of the humeral condyles. Here you can see the fine crack. And again, that predisposes a dog to developing a complete fracture of the elbow. From a front view, you can see Again, the crack here in the bone, this dog has it on both left and right elbows. The other thing to note is the head of the radius sits right here below the lateral condyle and the forces that go through the radius will then be transmitted into this lateral condylar region, thus a bang or an extreme force will pop this off. So let's look at the biomechanics of the fracture. One thing that is important to know is that when weight is put on a leg, the majority of the forces are delivered through the radius bone to the humerus bone. And as you can see, the radial head, which is the top of the radius, does impact or join onto this lateral condylar region. As a result, when the forces are transmitted upwards, we can have a propagation of this crack that goes into this region, the lateral epicondylar crest, and subsequently it can break that off. In some cases, we will have a more complex fracture develop. It's called a Y fracture. Similar kind of problem. We have failure of ossification of the medial and lateral condyles. The force is applied onto this area by the dog jumping off of a sofa or off a deck or out of the arms of a pet owner. And as a result, boom, it'll go right through both medial and lateral epicondylar crests, and we end up with a situation which we have a three-piece fracture. This fracture is much, much more difficult to repair uh, in dogs because it's very difficult to see this area right here to line up the cartilage surface. What are the signs of a dog that has sustained a fracture? Typically, the pet will acutely cry out in pain and become non-weight-bearing on the limb. 
you may see swelling of the area, bruising, the limb will feel unstable, it'll be floppy, and if you palpate the area, you may feel some crunching of the bones. Initially, the pet should go to a, an emergency facility or to the primary care veterinarian and pain management in the form of nar narcotics and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories are typically administered. Splinting of the limb can be difficult due to the location of the fracture and the sheer uh, anatomy of a dog's leg. If it is necessary to splint the area, a uh, more elaborate splint, such as a spica splint, can be put on, and a spica splint involves bandaging around the chest and then down the entire affected leg, followed by placement of casting material within that bandage to immobilize the area. The diagnosis of the fracture is made on x-rays. Here you can see this fragment right here is displaced. It should be nice and confluent. You should not have the step here that tells us it is truly broken. This surface right here should line up with this surface. So again, we know that it is broken. In some of these cases, especially a mature animal, we'll recommend to have a CT scan done to see if we have the incomplete ossification syndrome. And that way we can inform the client that the opposite leg also may be prone to developing the same kind of fracture. And as a prophylactic measure, we could place a very stout screw across these condyles to reduce the risk that that is gonna split apart down the road. Testing that's done prior to surgery includes blood work. We wanna make sure that the internal organs are working properly. We wanna make sure that on the blood count that the dog is not anemic, that we have adequate platelets so that we're not going to have a clotting issue. X-rays are used to identify the fracture, help us plan what kind of repair we're going to end up needing to do, and then, as I mentioned, CT scan may be needed, especially in a mature dog, to rule out the incomplete ossification of the humeral condyles. If the dog has been hit by a car, we generally recommend to move forward with additional testing like a full body CT scan, which I think is ideal, or at minimum do a fast scan of the abdomen with ultrasound, make sure there isn't any abdominal bleeding. We want to make sure that there isn't any evidence of chest trauma. In regards to surgery, an incision is made on the side of the elbow and it depends on the location of the fracture. Most of the time we're making an incision on the outer side or the lateral side of the elbow and if we're dealing with a complex elbow fracture it may require two incisions, one on the inner side, one on the outer side of the elbow area in order to fix this very complex fracture. In some situations we also approach the elbow by making a cut in the ulna bone at the top. It's called a transolecranon approach. And that piece of bone is then flipped up to uh, expose the elbow joint more thoroughly. This is the method of repair for a lateral condylar fracture. In the situation, what is done is the lateral condylar fragment is put together with uh, a bone clamp we have to make sure that this area lines up perfectly. If we see that this area lines up perfectly, we'll know that this part within the joint typically is lined up really nicely too. During the surgery, this part is not visible. It is impossible to see this part with a lateral approach. And following the reduction of the fracture, a transcondylar screw is placed. That means it goes across the lateral condyle and the medial condyle to fix this in place. An anti-rotation pin is placed from the lateral epicondylar area right through the epicondylar crest and then it will penetrate the cortex of the diaphysis of the humerus. And this basically gives additional support, prevents rotation of this entire segment uh, along the uh, screw here. 
In some cases, we will also add a metal plate on the side, but most of the time in a young dog, we will only need to place a pin and screw. The more complex fracture, the Y supracondylar fracture, as you can see, has a much more elaborate uh, fixation that is needed. To start off, what is usually done is the two condyles are uh, put together. They are reduced, followed by a transcondylar screw. In some of these cases, if we have a nice long spike, we will reduce this long, nice spike first, get some fixation, put a plate on there, it becomes then a two-piece fracture, followed by reduction of the lateral condyle and placement of additional fixation. So in the traditional method of repair, transcondylar screw is placed, followed by application of a bone plate, typically on the medial and lateral sides of the bone, with a series of bone screws that go through the holes of the plate and into the bone. During the surgery, once we have everything put back together, we'll infuse the surgical site with a medication called Noceta. Noceta is a three-day sustained release local anesthetic. It is placed in these very small microscopic spheres called liposomes. The liposomes have small little cells on them. These little cells or honeycombs contain the medication and they gradually pop or open up over a three-day three -day period. And this is a fantastic way to help the patient get through the post-operative period by reducing their discomfort. We cannot completely remove all pain uh, in the post-operative period with this method, but it dramatically uh, improves the uh, uh, post-operative recovery period, reducing the pain that the patient otherwise would have. After surgery, we typically will see a moderate amount of weight bearing by two weeks, by two months. Usually the lameness is minimal. In the younger dog, we sometimes see that they heal up and recover a lot quicker. Uh, typically by three or four